Welcome to the tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a 2.5D game in GDevelop. Now, if you don't know what 2.5D game is, a 2.5D game is a game where the gameplay is 2D, which means the player is still moving side to side or just in two dimensions in general. But the models and the objects are 3D. The world and environment that they're in is 3D. So the question is, how do we make that in GDevelop? Now, it's quite simple, but it's not as simple as you would think. But it is still very easy. So I'm just going to show you. Now, of course, our player, just for the sake of example, I'm going to have our player as 2D. But even though our player is going to look 2D, you could make them 3D if you want to. But even though our player is going to look 2D, I'm going to show you why it has to be a 3D object. So you may think we should create a sprite first, but we actually need to create a 3D box first. I'm going to show you why in a moment. So I'm going to call the 3D box the player, and we're only going to show the front face so it can look flat. If we show the other faces, it won't be flat anymore. So you want to make sure you check off all the other faces except for the front face. And I'm going to go into my files, and I'm going to try as fast as possible to find one of the images that I want. I'm just going to use a red cube. You can just open up Pisco and create a red cube, a 32 by 32. And this is the red cube that we have right here. Now, if I go into behaviors, I also want to add a behavior. And this behavior will be a platform character. And it will have default controls for the sake of this tutorial. You can change what you want. But I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to preview this. Now, off right off the bat, you see that the player has a shadow. So you know if that is 3D. And I'm going to set its custom size to be equal to 32 by 32 in all dimensions. Even though it looks fine right now as a 2D object, you should also change the depth to be 32 as well. Because that way it will be able to handle 3D collision better if you want to make 3D collisions. More than likely you won't. So here we have the player right here. Now you may think, why didn't we just create a sprite? And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to add a new object and click sprite. And I'm going to call this just test because we're going to delete it anyway. I'm going to import an image, and it's going to be the same red cube. And it's going to be the same size by default. And the reason why we're using the 3D box instead of the regular 2D cube is because the two, 3D box, I can change the Z position. And the Z position, of course, is forward and backwards. So if I add 100 to this, or 1,000, you can see that it gets closer to the screen. But on the other hand, if I use this test object... And I change the Z order because we don't have a Z value because it's 2D. It doesn't change anything. All it does is change the layer that is on. It just makes it appear higher than other objects. So when we're doing a 2.5D game, a lot of times they have features where you can go into the background. And you can't do that with a 2D object. So that's why for 2.5D games, nearly every object except for like UI is using a 3D object. So that's why we don't use 2D objects. So I'm going to delete this right here. And we're going to delete this. And this test block will also be deleted. So now let's actually get into creating the 2.5D game. So since we're going to be creating a 2.5D game, that means we need to have 3D blocks. So I'm going to add a new object. And the, it's going to be a 3D box, not a sprite, of course. And I'm just going to call this brick. And you might be like, are we going to design a brick? We're not going to design a brick. We're going to just simply use something from the GDevelop Asset Store. So you can click on one of the faces and put choose from Asset Store. GDevelop Asset Store has a bunch of free sprites that you can do for prototyping. So I'm going to type in brick and hit enter. It's going to take a little bit to load, but it shouldn't take too long. So if it's going to load, we're going to just wait a little bit. Got to be patient with GDevelop. There's a lot of sprites that has to load up. So here we have it. I'm going to use this flat brick wall right here. And that's the front face. We want to show all the faces since it's a 3D object. So I'm going to go right here, click the br flat brick, roll, brick wall tongue tie here and we're gonna fill this in for all the faces so now that this face the faces are done and we're gonna drag this brick onto the scene and you'll see that is actually a 3d object of course if I preview right now if I preview our player will actually fall through the block and that's because we didn't give it a collision so I'm gonna click into the platform with a brick brick and I'm gonna go into behaviors add a behavior and the behavior that we want is the platform behavior because this coincides with the platform character behavior and now behave like a platform we don't want ledges to be grabbed I'm gonna hit apply and now if I preview you'll see that I'm standing on 3d object now you may think this tutorial should be over right here we just made a game with 2d gameplay and you're on 3d objects that's really cool well we're not done and I'm going to show you something and I'm going to design I'm going to 
copy and paste some more of these blocks around the place. And so it can be even. I'm going to go into my grid right here. And I'm going to set up grid. And since our blocks are 100 by 100 by 100, I'm going to set the cell width and the cell height to be equal to 100 by 100. And now to actually show the grid, I need to click the object in the grid. And then I show the grid. So now I can evenly have all my blocks spaced out. I'm going to just duplicate a few of these and show you why we're not just done just yet. So I'm going to create a little platform here that kind of covers our entire area. I'm going to copy and paste this one more time, duplicate it. And here we have it. I'm going to piece it together and zoom out, drag this over the whole thing. And we here we have a level. Now, of course, I'm going to preview once again. You may think, OK, we have more objects. Everything still works the same. It looks cool. Well, it's not good. Now, of course, in a 2.5D game, you want the environment to look like a 3D. You want objects in different layers and different Z positions. And I'm going to drag another brick onto the scene. And I'm going to change the Z to be equal to 200. And as you can see, it's equal to 200. So the player shouldn't be able to really touch this. The player should not be able to touch this because it's in a whole different layer. Well, I placed it a little bit too far off screen. I'm going to go full screen. And you'll see that, okay, I shouldn't be able to touch the thing. It's clearly not in my way. But if I walk over it to it, you'll see that I'm getting stuck. And the reason why I'm getting stuck is because GDevelop, at the end of the day, is still a 2D engine right now. Maybe it'll be 3D one day. But it's still a 2D engine as we speak, which means it processes collisions in a 2D space, not in a 3D space. So GDevelop doesn't care about what your Z position is when it comes to collisions. It will just treat it like a 2D object. So even though our Z is in a whole different layer, it's still treating it like you know it's still treating it like it's a regular 2d object so how do we change that in order for it to change this there's no easy fix we have to actually use events so we're going to open up our event editor here and i'm going to add an event and the event that we want to add is going to be checking whether or not our box's z position is equal with the player's z position if the box's z position is equal to the player's z position we want to make it so, yes, we can collide with it. But if the box's Z position is not equal to the player's Z position, we don't want to be able to collide with it. Now, you may think, how are we going to do this? Because we don't want to be manually setting each and every blocks to have like activation code like that. We don't want to have to manually set this brick to have some type of code where it checks that. Because we'll never be able to design levels that way. It'll take forever. And the way that we do things like that, where we want to assign... A certain code and check it for a bunch of different objects that are of the same type we use something called for each instance so i'm going to go into this plus i'm going to click into where it says for each object and the object that we want this to be repeated for is brick and what we're saying is that for each brick basically individually all these bricks will be checked so it's not just a one for all code all of these bricks individually will be running this code all of these bricks individually to check for a certain condition. So I'm going to there's I'm going to add a condition here, and we want to check if the Z position of the player is not equal to the Z position of the block. So I'm going to put in the player, and I'm going to put Z, and we want to put not equal to, and we want to put the brick dot Z. So I'm going to put brick dot Z, and that's the Z position. And now that's the condition. So we want to check, okay, the Z position of the player is not equal to brick Z. What do we want to do if it's not equal to brick Z? Well, we want to deactivate the platform. We basically don't want to be able to collide with it. So how do we do that? How do we get rid of the collision? Very simple. I'm going to go into our brick and I'm going to scroll down and you should see something that eventually says deactivate the behavior and our platform behavior. That's what we have. So I'm going to deactivate the behavior and you'll see you have two options. Yes and no. If you want to deactivate it, you put no. If you want to activate it, you put yes. Simple. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to hit preview. Now, you'll still see that I'm colliding with these bricks just fine because our player and the bricks on the ground, they both have a Z position of zero. But this block right here, you'll see that I'm no longer stuck on this block because now our, we're individually checking for each block. So that block that's in front, it checks and it sees that its Z position is not equal to mine the player so therefore it gets rid of its behavior so that's how you ch do that change now how would you actually kind of like switch layers you want to switch layers and before we learn how to switch layers because of course you want to kind of be able to go into the background and everything we need to add one more piece of code I'm going to copy this I'm going to paste it and we want to check if the player's Z position is equal 
to the brick Z, we want to activate the behavior. That for the reason why we're doing this is because now if we're switching back and forth between layers, it will reactivate the behavior when our Z position is back being equal to it instead of permanently deactivating. So now we have that piece of code right here. So now we want to do some layer switching. And before we do the layer switching, I'm actually going to add a quick camera code. Um, and I'm going to learn, you're going to learn how to do the 3D camera here. So at the beginning of the scene, we want to change the camera's FOV. And the reason why we're changing the FOV, normally we wouldn't do this in a 2D game, but we're doing with 3D objects. We're going to change the FOV so we're not too close up to the screen. So we can have more of an effect when we're switching layers. So I'm going to go into our scene at the beginning of scene. And now we want to change the FOV. And what FOV stands for is field of view. So I'm going to go into other actions, go into 3D, and you'll see camera field of view or FOV. And the degree that we want to set it to, I'm going to set it to zero as a test. Well, not zero, um, put set to 40. And you can test out different values because it's zero, you're not going to really see much. But the camera number is going to be zero, it's zero by default. And I'm going to preview. So now by preview, you see that it's kind of spaced out. You don't you don't notice too much. Let me add something to it and see if you notice a little bit more. I'm gonna put as 60, and you'll see that I'm much more spaced out. I like this 60 right here, so I'm gonna keep it at 60 for now. And I'm going to change this. I'm actually gonna put this brick in the background. I'm going to create a, a layer of bricks and put them on the background, and we're gonna teleport to that using portals just to test out the depth effects. So I'm going to right click this and I'm just going to duplicate a few of these create a little platform and I'm going to create it just an eight block platform and if we want to put all of these in the ground and I basically can change their height a little bit we want to put all of these in the background so I'm going to drag and cover all of these blocks and since we want to put them behind us and not in front of us we're going to use a negative value I'm going to put something like negative 400 they're really in the background let's get even more bold negative 600 and now they're just really like all the way in the background. And we're gonna have this out of bounds. Well, not out of bounds, we're gonna have it right here. We don't actually need to create any more camera codes as we can see all of it within our view. So you see that this is in the background. Of course, we can't collide with it because of our smart code. So this platform is in the background and we wanna be able to get to that platform. So we're gonna create a portal. I'm gonna add an object. I'm gonna have it as a, well, it can't be a sprite because remember, if we wanna change the depth not the depth, the Z position of all objects, they have to be 3D. So you gotta get out of the habit of making 2D sprites. We have to make them all 3D. I'm gonna add a 3D box and I'm gonna call this portal. And you can create a green or whatever color you want to cube. I would just have these test sprites so I can easily create stuff like this. I'm gonna show all the faces. And I'm gonna quickly fill this in with all the green objects and the green blocks. And here we have it right now. And now the portal, I'm going to drag this onto the scene a little bit too big for my liking. going to set it to 48 by 48 by 48. Doesn't really matter what it is though. And here we have it. I'm going to set this first portal as being on the same Z position. I'm going to deactivate the grid by unactivating show grid. And I'm going to drag this right here. And I'm also, we want to, let me see, we want to make another portal. We want to make another portal. So I'm going to duplicate this object and now we have two portals. So this is working as we expect it, working exactly as we expect it. So I'm gonna drag this portal and I'm going to set its custom size to be the same size as the other one. And 48 by 48 by 48. And we have that right here. And of course we want to be in the background. Remember the Z position of these blocks are negative 600. So we want to make the portal to also be negative 600. So we have that right now. And now this portal is in the background. Cool, everything's working great. So we want to make it so when we run into portal one, we teleport to portal two. And when we go to portal two, we teleport to portal one. So here we have, I'm gonna add a new event, add a condition, if player, we want to first check if the player's Z position is equal to the Z position of the portal. So if portal, well, if player Z is equal to portal dot Z dot Z, and we're going to put the parentheses. If player, if the Z position of the player is equal to portal 
dot Z. We want to teleport the player to a certain position and change is Z. So of course, if we teleport it right on the portal, it'll teleport us right back. So we have to teleport to a position that's not actually on the portal. So I'm going to teleport to a position of kind of farther off, just to make sure we don't collide. 720, 21. 720, 21 should be good. I'm going to just keep saying it to remember it. We want to teleport the player. So we're going to go into position. And we want to change the position to be equal to 720 for the X and 21. And we also want to set the Z because we want the player to be in the background now. So I'm going to go into add an action player Z and then set that equal to negative 600, which is the same as the background objects. So I'm going to preview this. And I start off in the background. Let me see if it's equal to portal dot Z. And we forgot to put and if it's in collision. And if it's in collision with the portal. So I'm going to put collision with portal. And I'm going to click preview now. And you'll see, okay, we start off on the first layer. If I touch this portal, nothing happened. Nothing happened in the least. So we want to see why I thought we didn't even teleport at all. Why I thought we didn't teleport. So our Z, is it equal to this portal Z? That's the question. Is it equal to this portal Z? Yes, it is equal to the portal Z. And we put if portal is in collision with portal. I must be tired or something. Player is in collision with portal. Not portal, in collision with portal. So now if we check this one more time, this should work. And yeah, I teleport it all the way over there. But now we want to do the same thing for when we touch this portal. And you may be wondering a little bit, why can't we just kind of make a flexible code like we did with the bricks, like where each portal kind of detects it on its own. The reason why we can't do that is because the, each of these portals teleport us to different locations. So we can't make a general code that applies to all portals because they teleport us to different spots. So for portal two, we want to do the same thing. I'm going to copy and paste. If player is in collision with portal two dot Z, well, if player Z position is equal to the portal two Z position and players in collision with portal two, we want to change the player's position to be outside of this portal. So I'm going to put 1050 and 420, 1050 and 420 for the X and Y. And for the Z, we want to set it back equal to zero. I'm going to preview this. And we should be able to go back and forth between both portals. I'm going to go into here. I'm going to teleport to a new spot. And then I teleport right back. And that's how you make a 2.5D in GDevelop. Remember to get creative and also a word of wisdom. When you're making different elements in your game, like let's say there's different enemies on different layers who are shooting bullets, you have to apply the same code. You have to first check if the player Z position is equal to the Z position of whatever object you're trying to make it interact with. And then you do a regular 2D check. You can see that all these events and conditions for the collisions, they're exactly the same as 2D. All we did was add a check to see whether or not the player's Z position is equal to the Z position of whatever it's trying to interact with. So that's how you make 2.5D games in GDevelop. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below, and hit the notification bell so you never miss on any of my new videos. Make sure to also comment down below which tutorials you want to see next, specifically 3D tutorials, as I love making those tutorials. Next week, we have a 3D FPS game that was going to be made, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Once again, please subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. And also consider becoming a member $0.99 a month. You get some special perks that are listed in there. And it just helps support Keep the Game Dev so I can keep making great tutorials. Once again, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next tutorial. See ya. Thank you.